And this is the third part of our series discussing physiology relevant for diagnosing and treating patients with tricuspid regurgitation related right heart failure. And here I want to explore with you the implications of tricuspid intervention on right heart function. We're going to take a look at theoretical and actual hemodynamic implications induced by treating the tricuspid valve. And transcatheter therapies for tricuspid regurg have emerged only recently, but developed quickly and offer a tremendous therapeutic potential for an underserved patient population, but also a great physiological model to understand and possibly reverse right heart failure. Many different therapies are being investigated, but for the sake of clarity, we want to focus here on the most commonly applied technique, namely leaflet repair, and also touch up on interventional replacement. The principle of tricuspid valve edge-to-edge -edge repair is the reduction of the regurgent office area by leaflet approximation and also indirect annulopathy. And this can be quite effective in clinical practice, as seen here, uh, going from a very severe TR to a very mild residual MR after edge-to-edge -edge repair. This holds true also for clinical studies where TR can effectively be reduced in almost 90% of patients with a durable effect. But please focus here on the right side of the slide where you can appreciate the substanti substantial number of patient is left with more than mild tricuspid regurg. This might be different for interventional tricuspid replacement, where you get a complete resolution of TR in virtually every patient. And um, now let's have a look what happens when we perform tricuspid edge-to-edge -edge repair. RV stroke volume is reduced by means of a reduction in regurgitant volume, also reducing RV ejection fraction. However, RV afterload is increased. Systolic pressure increases, and there's a slight increase in pressure volume loop area, also indicating an in possible increase in oxygen consumption. And this is, might even be more pronounced with complete resolution of the TR as in interventional replacement, further reducing stroke volume and increasing RE afterload. And if oxygen supply cannot match the demand, right ventricular contractility starts to decrease. The slope of the antistolic elastins goes down, as you see here. Um, pressures drop, RV output drops. This leads to hypertension and ultimately a low cardiac output syndrome. Um, in the setting of acute right heart failure. Um, this concept then is called afterload mismatch. And this has been reported anecdotally here in a patient undergoing um, tricuspid edge-to-edge -edge repair who experienced a profound hypertension and RV dysfunction after placement of the clip. Fortunately, this was very transient and this patient recovered quickly without sequelae. However, when we look at this systematically in the trivalve registry, which included 500 patients treated with multiple devices, we observed the, that the incidence of low cardiac output syndromes after tricuspid valve interventions is pretty low. This, albeit associated with a poor prognosis. Diving deeper into specific reasons, we observed that the occurrence of a low cardiac output syndrome after the intervention was related to pre-interventional morbidity, procedural complications, and only in a very minority of patients, there was the possible chance of an RV afterload mismatch. And now that we understand what doesn't happen, let's explore what does. And to illustrate this, we can turn to cardiac magnetic resonance imaging, which provides excellent quantification of cardiac volumes and flow. And as such, we can appreciate that when we perform tricuspid edge-to-edge -edge repair, we actually reduce tricuspid regurgitant fraction, consistent with a reduction in TR rate. And this is accompanied by a reduction in right, right ventricular and diastolic volumes, consistent with a reduction in RV preload. 
total RV stroke volume is increased consistent with the reduction in regurgitant volume. However, effective forward stroke volume, meaning stroke volume going from the RV to the pulmonary artery is enhanced. Turning to afterload, we see quite a variable response with no change in pulmonary pressures in some patients, even a reduction uh, in this cohort here and a slight increase in others. And this is most likely to be explained by the complex interplay of the ventricles um, and the favorable, uh, favorable effect of the reduction of RV volume overload on ventricular interdependence, reducing left ventricular pressures and therefore the post-capillary component of pulmonary hypertension, improving LV filling. And that this is true can uh, be corroborated when looking at left ventricular physiology after tricuspid repair, where we observe improved filling and also an improvement in diastolic function. Overall cardiac output surges after interventional tricuspid repair and this despite a tendency for a reduction in volumetric RV function. And this uh, trend is even pronounced after replacement as compared to repair here. And this might be related to a more complete TR resolution, but also to an interaction of the prosthesis to the base of the right ventricle. This uh, might also have implications for the occurrence of low cardiac output syndromes after the intervention. Here we are looking at a single center experience, the Newark Presbyterian Hospital, analyzing all the patients intervened for tricuspid regurgitation surgically and interventionally. And they found that the occurrence of a low cardiac output syndrome after the procedure was higher in the surgical group. But when focusing here on the interventional group, we see no occurrence after repair, a little bit after replacement, really indicating that it's the patient with the replacement that are at higher risk. So in conclusion, interventional reduction of tricuspid regurgitation reduces RV preload, has a variable effect on RV afterload, which might be influenced by the effect on ventricular interaction. It's associated with a decline in volumetric RV function but treating the TR increases cardiac output and acute RV failure after the intervention is rare, but occurs possibly more frequently after replacement as opposed to repair. And with that, I thank you and hope to see you at the next video.